What's up YouTube, welcome back to Celio's Network. If you wanted to know what the best decks in the Pokemon trading card game are right now in April 2020, then you've come to the right place because that's exactly what we will be talking about today. If you need to get PTCGO codes for building these decks, be sure to check out potownstore.com and use code Celio for 5% off. And if you're interested in the premium articles and exclusive content I'm offering to my patrons, go over to patreon.com slash Celio's Network to check that out. So these best decks in standard, this is my opinion on what the best decks are. And I've looked at the data from LimitlessTCG.com and I've also taken some lists provided by LimitlessTCG.com. So shout out to them uh, for helping me with the data and the lists for this video. So I'll be talking about the decks that have been most successful and the decks that I think you'll find the most success with if you decide to play them on Pokemon TCG Online, especially if you wanted to play some of these decks for the Limitless TCG Qualifier tournaments that are coming up. If you're interested in playing in those, they are free and you can check out more information about that on LimitlessTCG.com. So the first deck we're going to be talking about is Zacian ADP or ADPZ as I might refer to it. Uh, so ADP Z is fronted by the Arceus Dialga Palkia tag team that uses the Altered Creation GX attack to make it so your Pokemon do 30 more damage for the rest of the game. And every time you knock out a Pokemon with damage, you take an extra prize card. So it's a very aggressive deck as long as you can get Altered Creation GX off in the early game. And then Zacian V is just an incredibly efficient attacker. It deals 230 damage for just 3 energy. It has the Intrepid Sword ability, which allows you to draw cards and end your turn. And if any of those cards that you would draw are metal energy, you can just attach them to Zacian instead. Uh, so this deck is consistent, it's aggressive, it has some tanky Pokemon, it does a lot of damage, it pretty much has everything you want in a deck. And this is Tord Reklev's first place list from the Malmo Regionals earlier this year. Uh, this was just a very streamlined list built to just do the same thing over and over again because that's what adpz wants to do and this is probably considered by most players the best deck in the format so i wanted to start off with that but the rest of the list isn't really in any order of best to least best decks the rest are kind of just all more or less equal in my eyes so next we're going to be looking at a couple of Mewtwo and Mew tag team variants. This one is Mewtwo and Mew Welder, which Nico Alabas used to win the Melbourne Internationals earlier this year, which is a huge tournament, international championships if you're not aware. Uh, very large tournaments, worldwide players are there. Um, so Mewtwo and Mew tag team is very versatile because of its perfection ability. This Pokemon can use the attacks of any Pokemon GX or EX on your bench or discard pile. You still need the necessary energy to use the attacks, but that is not a problem because you're playing a four welder, which accelerate to fire energy from your hand and allows you to draw three cards. Uh, so you draw a lot of cards with welder, you attach a lot of energy with welder, and then you have a lot of powerful attacks to choose from between the Reshiram and Charizard GX, the Charizard GX promo, the Mag Cargo GX, the Naganadel with Stinger to put you both at three prizes, then the Naganadel with Venom Shot to snipe the bench. Um, and then Mewtwo and Mew is just a tanky, powerful Pokemon on its own. Um, this is another deck pretty much built for consistency and streamlined to do the same thing more or less every game. You want to get a welder, welder your energies down to a Mewtwo and Mew tag team and start dishing out aggressive, powerful attacks. Um, and you'll see the consistency cards like the four Jirachi, three to Dene, four Welder, four Quick Ball, four Cherish Ball, four Switch. It's just built very streamlined. Minimal amount of techs are there. Uh, so you can just have a consistent, powerful game every time with this deck. And then the next Mewtwo Mew tag team variant I want to talk about is Henry Brand's first place list from Perth Regional 2020 earlier this year. And this is a much more teched out version. Uh, it has just just a plethora of GX Pokemon you can copy with the Mewtwo and Mew GX. And then it even has some tech Pokemon that attack on their own that you can't copy with perfection ability like in DDV and Xerneas Prism. Um, so this Mewtwo Mew Tag Team GX variant is much more teched out, like I said, and it uses Solgaleo GX uh, from Sun and Moon, which was reprinted 
so you can still use it in standard. It uses the Soul Burst GX attack to search your deck for any five energy. That means special energy included. And attach them to your Pokemon in any way you like. And you can do that as early as turn one if you're going second. Uh, so you can just grab a bunch of Aurora, Rainbow, Unit, and Weakness Guard energy and slap them down to a couple of Mute 2 Mute tag teams and you're set for the game to use these powerful attacks that your GX Pokemon are allowing you to choose from, of course, with the perfection ability from Mute 2 Mew. This also uses Tag Call to search for tag team Pokemon and tag team supporters. So, of course, it searches for your Mew 2 and Mew, but then it can also get some utility supporters like Cynthia and Caitlyn, discard a card and you draw three and get a supporter back. Uh, Guzma and Hala to search for a stadium, a tool, and a special energy. And then Mallow and Lana, which can switch your Pokemon and also heal your active Pokemon for 120 health, which can be pretty useful if you're playing against something that does not one-shot your Pokemon. Um, and of course, Mewtwo and Mew Tag Team does have 270 HP, 300 with a big charm attached, so it's not going to be getting one shot all the time. Uh, so Mallow and Lana can be uh, pretty useful. Also note that this deck is playing four professors research, which discards your hand and draws seven, whereas the welder variant just plays the welders um, to accelerate energy. Uh, so it's focusing on using welder, whereas this one is focusing on using professor's research. Uh, so you are getting to see a lot more cards sometimes with this deck, although they are both playing to Dene GX. So uh, the welder version can make up for the lack of other supporter cards by using the Dene GXs. Next, we've got Pikachu and Zekrom Tag Team, which has been around for a while, and there's definitely been a bit of a power creep. You'll see Pikachu and Zekrom only has 240 HP, whereas Mewtwo and Mew has 270, and Rushy's Art has 270, and ADP has 280. Um, but Pikachu and Zekrom is still very powerful because of its Tag Bolt attack that can do 200 to the active and 170 to the bench, taking... Uh, multiple prize cards in one turn knocking out multiple pokemon in one turn and also the full blitz attack which does 150 and accelerates three energy to the board uh, which is very very strong and you have a lot of lightning support you have the tapu koko prism the thunder mountain electro power electromagnetic radar and electromagnetic radar happens to fetch out the den agx which just fits into this deck really well uh, the Dene GX is strong in most decks in standard format, but because you can play Electromagnetic Radar here, it works out even better. Um, it also has the Z Zero Aura GX, which has the ability to allow you to retreat for free as long as you have Lightning Energy on the Pokemon. So there's just so much going for Pikachu and Zekrom that although it's been power crept out, uh, it's still a strong deck, and it's very consistent at doing what it wants to do. And you'll notice that I talk about that a lot when I'm talking about the best decks in standard format, that they are consistent at doing what they want to do. Like, Tord Reklev's very streamlined, very... Uh, aggressive ADP Z list. It was built to do the same thing every game, and that's why it was so successful because it's good at doing the same thing every game. And ADP Z is strong enough that it can be a linear deck. It, it's fine if you're linear just because you're taking extra prizes with every attack, so there's uh, really no way to go wrong with that. And it's the same kind of thing with Pikachu and Zekrom, but just to a lesser extent, whereas if you're doing this Tag Bolt attack turn 2 or turn 3, and you're knocking out the active and knocking out a bench to Dene, um, even though you've been power crept out of the format a bit and your opponent knows your game plan, your game plan is so strong that you're still going to win games because of how consistent and how strong you are as a deck. Uh, so Pikachu and Zekrom, although it's been around for a while, still one of the top decks, still a great contender in the current standard format. Next, we've got Malamar Giratina, or Speltag Malamar, or Psychic Malamar, whatever you want to call it. Um, this list got top 16 at Melbourne Internationals 2020. And uh, the list hasn't changed too much since then. Of course, you can always change these lists for yourself, but these are great starting lists for all of the archetypes that I'm showing here. And of course, you can go find these lists at LimitlessTCG.com if you're interested. Uh, but Malamar and Giratina is very strong because it's a single prize based deck in a format of a lot of multiple prize Pokemon like Tag Teams and Zacian V. So um, you're two shotting them, but you're taking more prizes than they are when they're one shotting you. And it kind of evens it out in the end. Uh, and it's just who can 
uh, chain, who can chain more attacks in a row, who can attack more efficiently and more consistently. And Malmar Giratina is built to do just that. It can attack very efficiently and it can spread damage and it can even take multiple knockouts in one turn. Uh, because of the Distortion Door ability, which constantly recurs Tina from the discard to the bench, and it also spreads a little bit of damage to their bench. And then you have Spell Tag when you're knocked out. Uh, you can spread four damage counters to the opponent's board. You have Esper, which can snipe the bench. Blacephalon, which can spread damage. Solgaleo and Lunala GX, which is actually a very tanky Pokemon and can one-shot something and then potentially tank a hit for a turn in the end game. Um, so there's a lot going for this deck, except it is a stage one evolution deck, whereas most of the format is not evolving. Most of the decks, you'll notice all of these other decks that I've mentioned so far are basic Pokemon based, and they don't have support Pokemon that need to evolve. Uh, which is why Malamar Tina might be a little bit lower on the food chain because you do have a little less inherent consistency since you do have to search out your stage one Pokemon and set them up to get your deck rolling. But once you do get going, you have such a powerful onboard presence with a couple Malamar and a Tina that constantly gets itself back from the discard pile that you're kind of set up for the rest of the game for the most part in most situations. Uh, so this is a strong deck. It is a pretty good deck matchup spread wise. Um, it's probably one of my favorite to play in the current standard just because of its really great matchup spread, uh, but it's had a little bit less success than the other decks mentioned so far. Next, we have another deck with evolutions in it. It is Chinchino Mill. Uh, so Chinchino is basically just used for its ability which allows you to discard a card and draw two to get through your deck quick enough and the strategy here is to mill your opponent's deck so that means discard their cards of their deck until they're down to zero cards and they lose because they can't draw for turn this deck got top four at melbourne international 2020 and it uses the four Belelba and bryson man which discards three cards from the top of each player's deck um, and then you constantly use this over and over with pal pads and R and Guru's resource management. And you can use two of these a turn with Lieutenant Surge. Um, so your kind of combo turn at the end of the game that wins the game most of the time is you play a Lieutenant Surge. Then you play two Belelba and Bryson Man to discard six cards from your opponent's deck. And then you use my Cargo GX's GX attack, which mills the top five from your opponent's deck. So that's a total of 11 cards discarded in your opponent's deck in one turn. So if your opponent... And the end game has 11 cards or less in their deck it is possible that you can win the game right there um, of course you do use the Mewtwo and Mew GX sometimes to uh, copy the Mycargo GX other times you can evolve the Mycargo GX on top of a ditto uh, so you do risk prizing one of the pieces for that ending combo but you don't necessarily need uh, that ending combo you could just win with Belelba and Bryson man uh, some annoying things with this deck is that it uses four crushing hammers and some lists are now using team Yelgrunt as well to disrupt energies and it plays four Lily's Polka Doll, so your opponent is, is hitting these dolls uh, that don't reward them with a prize card, but they have to get rid of them at some point, if, unless they're playing Fion or they have enough gust effects to get around it. Uh, but usually players can't get around all of the dolls, and you will end up stalling a few turns of the game enough to allow you to mill the opponent. So this is a strong deck, but it is fairly linear and if opponents tech for it like extra gust effects or they play the fion uh, or they play multiple cards that recycle cards into their deck like they play resource management uh, maybe extra pal pads maybe extra ordinary rods to make the game go a little longer they can take six prize cards before you can mill them uh, but in a meta where players are not prepared for mill mill is very strong the last deck we're going to take a look at here is Baby Blacephalon or Blacephalon Unbroken Bonds. Uh, this deck kind of gained popularity and more recognition because of Stefan Ivanov playing it a lot and kind of endorsing it. He got fifth place top eight at Malmo Regionals. Um, Stefan Ivanov is a very good player and he's made a very consistent and very strong list for Blacephalon. I believe he's also written some content on the deck. Uh, but this list is from Limitless TCG, like I said, Stefan Ivanov's from Malmo Regionals, and I've actually played a bit of this list myself. I've just taken out the Ultra Forest Cartonvoy 
um, for I believe a Zacian V for a little more consistency. Or no, actually I've took I've taken the Ultra Farce Carton Boy out for a Victini Prism uh, because I really like that as an attacking option. Uh, but as you can see, this Baby Blacephalon deck actually has a fair amount of attacking options. It can attack with its main attacker Blacephalon using Fireball Circus, which discards any number of Fire Energy cards from your hand and does 50 damage for each card you discarded in this way, and that does a ton of damage. Blacephalon's just a single prize Pokemon, so you can one shot tag team Pokemon and take three prizes with just this little. Blacephalon. Um, of course, you do need setup. You have to welder to it to have the energy on it to attack. And then you have to play fire crystals or fiery flints to get the energy into your hand to discard. So there is setup. It's not extremely easy to do, but the list is built to do that. And then you also have tech attackers like the Blacephalon GX that can just take a prize card at any time for one prize. The Victini V, which is a solid attacker versus fire weak Pokemon. And the Cramorant V, which can snipe the bench, namely sniping a Dedenne for three energy and just taking the last two prizes to end the game there. Uh, so this deck also has the Beast Bringer, which is uh, a tool card you can attach to an Ultra Beast Pokemon. And if you are at six prizes and you knock out an opponent's Pokemon, you take an extra prize for doing so. Uh, so if you can get that combo off for the first prize, so you get the Beast Bringer on your baby Blacephalon, you Welder, you get the energy in your hand with Crystal and Flint, um, and you take a knockout on a tag team, you take four prizes right off the bat, and then all you have to do for the rest of the game is use Kramer and V to knock out one to then AGX and the game is over. Uh, so this deck can be aggressive. Um, it's very uh it's very reliant on getting energies into your hand, so you need your flints and your crystals and then your welders to accelerate the energy as well. Um, but the deck is built to circumvent how many pieces you need. Uh, it has the four Jirachi and it has the Oricorio GX that has the ability when something is knocked out last turn, you can draw three cards this turn. And of course, the Dene GX and Welder itself draws cards and you have a pal pad to put Welders back into the deck. So uh, there are cards in here to circumvent how many pieces you may need sometimes to take the knockouts with Fireball Circus. But this is a very strong deck. You should be fairly scared of it if you're playing a tag team or GX reliant deck. And uh, Malamar is actually a very good answer to this deck since it's attacking with such efficient attacks with the Tina that just recurs itself every turn while baby Blacephalon needs a lot to get going for every attack just about. Um, so be scared of this deck if you're playing a GX or tag team reliant deck and uh, this deck should be a little bit scared of Malamar. So that is all I have for the best decks in standard. Like I said, I'm recording this in April 2020. So this is up to date if you're watching this in April or maybe even the beginning of May for the Ultra Prism through Sword and Shield standard format. All of these decks are very good to build for PTCGO if you're playing in tournaments or you just want to dominate the eight man tournaments and the ladder on PTCGO. Check out potownstore.com if you need codes. And of course, like I said in the beginning, use code Celio for 5% off. Check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash Celio's network. If you'd like to check out some of the premium content I'm offering to my patrons. And of course, subscribe to this channel if you'd like to see more content like this in the future. I'll see you next time here on Celio's network.